Well, $6 a gallon gas is not out of the question, according to our next guest. Right now, the national average for a gallon of regular is at $3.89, approaching that record $4.11 set back in 2008. If the dollar gets any weaker, a hurricane hits in the wrong spot, or unrest continues in places like Syria and Libya, we could see another big price spike. Richard Hastings is a consumer strategist at Global Hunter Securities. He joins us now live. Uh, Richard, welcome. Welcome back to uh, In Business. Let me ask you here. We just got this consumer confidence number, and it looks like the consumer's walking off the higher price at the pump. Are you concerned if we hit six bucks? No, the uh, gas inflation, Margaret, is going to be a part of the economy. It's not going to stop it. The consumer is in stable to good shape. Job market is good. Uh, job creation started in January. Look at the retail sales. Exordos in March, $320 billion not seasonally adjusted, up more than about 16% year over year, and up 6.6% month over month. So there's plenty of strength out there. It's the job market, it's the variety of types of jobs, salaries, um, everything is starting to pull itself together with the exception of certain aspects of housing. Uh, yeah, when you talk about those uh, comparisons, the comps for gasoline, when you talk about the comps and the stores just for the amount people pay, isn't the ticket getting skewed by that food inflation, gas price inflation, apparel inflation? In other words, are well, we getting a false read yeah. on the ability of the consumer to spend? Oh, I love that comment because every time uh, the Census Bureau comes out with retail sales, we take the Exordos not seasonally adjusted number. We divide it by the monthly average gas price. We're still not below that level at Hurricane Katrina, and we're not below the 2008 price spike. But what it does, just like you're saying, it kind of brings down what the actual spending power is. So you are getting a diminishment in spending power, but it's being offset by this improvement in the job market. And that dis diminishment in spending power, it, when you do see the consumer have some apprehension about paying more because they're, they are having the, to pay that much more just to fuel up their car, where do you see the first bits of, of cutbacks? Oh, uh, there's two things that the consumer starts to say. According to the survey responses from more than 8,000 shoppers a month by Big Research, two things you'll look for. They start to make comments about how they're driving. They say they're going to drive less. They start saying that. And then maybe about four or six months later, they actually start doing that. And then the other big thing is they say they're going to eat out less. That takes a hit rather immediately. But things like spending on apparel, uh, there's not that much change there. They start to change a little bit of the mix that they spend on groceries, a little bit of the basket inside of the dollar stores, something like Dollar General Family, Dollar Big Lots. They'll start to see a slight change in the mix of things in the basket at checkout. But the really big thing that's more measurable is eating out. Because that ticket is going to get bigger and therefore people are going to avoid eating out? No, what they're going to do is they're going to share one dessert. They're mm -hmm. going to get water instead of different kinds of beverages. They're going to be a little bit more selective about the ticket on the specific menu item that they choose for the entree. Uh, casual family dining is what does definitely take a hit every single time. This won't be different. But uh, the question that's hanging out there about demand destruction, yeah. will the high gas inflation create demand destruction that would slow down the economy, break the consumer, and therefore break the circular flow of the consumer back to the economy? It's not going to happen. We're going to live with inflation, and the economy is going to move forward, uh, yes, at a slightly slower growth rate on a quarter-over-quarter -quarter basis later this year. But we are not going into recession because of this, not at all. It's refreshing to hear this kind of optimism, Richard. Uh, tell me, what is inflation going to look like for the consumer when it really matters for the stores? In other words, back to school. You've got excellent question, Margaret. Two different waves of price inflation for the consumer. Back to school apparel is wave number one. That'll occur on top of the high summer gasoline prices. Our peak forecast for gas prices this summer late is about $4.43, averaging out in August. So you put that together, you're going to get a little bit of a slowdown in some of the lower income consumer. They're going to pick and choose what they're buying. 
Then you get the second big full blast wave of apparel inflation in the fall. In that fall transitional period, September and October especially, we're going to see the single biggest outbreak of inflation there in 20-something years. So uh, that's going to be a big change. Prices could be going up almost about 20 percent in some cases. That will still not break the consumer. Are you assuming, though, that as the job market gets better, that the amount people are paid will as well? Because we haven't really seen that boost in the size of the paycheck, even if more companies are creating jobs. Great point again. No, we're not going to see that kind of wage increase. What is going to happen is those who have hourly contracts are going to keep more hours. They're going to keep their contracts extended. 1099 employees are going to continue to be working. The people who are seeking qualified, higher ticket salary jobs, they're going to find those. So it's not like people are going to get big wage increases. No, we don't see that. But the ability to keep jobs is improving dramatically. Job retention is mm -hmm. the key concept here. And job growth in an absolute sense, especially good qualified positions at good tickets. All right, Richard, time will tell. We'll have to check back in with you in September. Thanks very much. Thank you.